Okay, so I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Krista Randall, and I am a um, doTERRA wellness advocate. Uh, I've been using essential oils for most of my life because I grew up overseas, but I've been using particularly doTERRA's essential oils for the last four years. Um, I was a vet tech. I managed an animal hospital, and I've owned pet grooming salons, kennels, and doggy daycares for the last 30 years. So I've really, really been involved in the animal industry my entire life. Um, I also, my husband and I have fostered over 93 dogs with only a couple foster failures that we kept. <laughs> but essential oils was one of the modalities that allowed me to foster so many dogs because they were safe, they were effective, and they were super inexpensive. Most essential oils are pennies per drop. Um, and I do have a chart. Um, and I'll post that in the, the Facebook event for you guys of exactly how much each drop costs. Um, I really am only talking about doTERRA essential oils today. There are a number of companies out there really, you know, jumping on the, the new wave that everybody's looking for essential oils. But legally in the United States um, and also internationally, they are allowed to put 10% of an essential oil in a bottle and call it 100% therapeutic. Therapeutic is a label that is only what it is intended for. It doesn't actually mean it's 100% essential oil. So there's a lot of um, fake essential oils out there uh, that are only fragrance compounds, synthetic fragrance compounds that can do a lot more harm than good to your pet. Even if you are using a brand just aromatically as a diffuser, because that is soaking directly into your mucous membranes, and that is a direct line to your bloodstream and your fur baby's bloodstream, your cat or dog, horse, guinea pig, hamster. So it's very, very important. A huge red flag on uh, perhaps an essential oil that you may have purchased at a health food store. Uh, is if they say for external use only. Um, for example, a peppermint oil, a peppermint leaf, we use that as um, flavoring. There is no reason that you should not be able to ingest internally 100% essential peppermint oil. So if it says for external use only, you can probably be guaranteed that there is some sort of synthetic or um, chemical constituent that uh, they're labeling it for external use only. Um, you may be tempted to choose a lesser or a cheaper brand of essential oil, but like many things, you get what you pay for. The great thing about doTERRA is they have um, supplement facts on the back, so you know they've gone through the supplement fact back, so you know exactly how much you can take internally as a human, and I'm going to share some dilutions with you for your pets. And they have also, on the very bottom of every single bottle of essential oil, there is a lot number. You can go to a website, which is called source to You. That is a third party laboratory that uh, doTERRA has hired to do testing for them, to make sure there's no herbicides, pesticides, synthetics, fillers, and also to make sure that the chemical constituents and the molecular compounds of that essential oil are medical grade and therapeutic so that you guys receive the um, same exact result bottle after bottle after bottle and there's no inconsistencies. That's very, very important. So again, that website is source to you.com. Great website, there's practitioners, there's science and research that have been published on PubMed. Um, so if you like more of the science end, it's a phenomenal. And it's also fun, take your lot number, plug it into that website and it's going to give you the laboratory results. So you know exactly what is in your bottle of essential oil. Um, so we're gonna talk about um, 
five topics today. Uh, this is really part one of the series. I am actually going to do part two because I have so much to talk about with pets, but just to keep it sweet and uh, simple and not overwhelming, we're going to talk about ear care, which I think is a huge challenge, especially right now during the summer months. Cats are swimming. We're going to talk about allergies um, or rashes or some seasonal threats. We're going to talk about arthritis in lamenesses. Um, we're going to talk about flea and tick control because um, that's a big one for me, and I'm going to share with you why um, later. And we're going to talk about digestive challenges. So this is my model, Bella. Bella is an eight-year-old Brussels Griffon. She is a rescue from Chicago. Um, and uh, so I'm just going to demonstrate some of the recipes we're going to talk about. First of all, let's talk about ear care. So um, labs, golden retrievers, Burmese mountain dogs, um, bloodhounds have dropped ears. And it's a warm, dark, uh, moist place for yeast and bacteria to grow, especially if your pet swims. I, um, I live on Cape Cod in the summer times. I live on the water and my pets swim every day. And in Florida, they go in the pool. So there's a very good chance water is in their ears every day. So I have to be proactive about taking care of their ears. Um, so we're going to talk first a, a basic ear cleaner. And this is Bella's secret sauce. And an ear cleaner can be so simple. Um, I like to use an organic witch hazel that's drying and helps dry any of that moisture out of there. It's non-irritating. Uh, there are some recipes out there that use apple cider vinegar. I have found if a dog or cat does have an irritation already, apple cider vinegar, we know if we get it on a cut on our skin, it can sink burn. Witch hazel doesn't do that. So I really find that it's a positive experience as well. Um, this is the exact recipe I use in all of my grooming salons, um, both on Cape Cod and down in Florida. So I, what I will do is um, there's two ways. You can mix it up in um, a glass jar. You can, uh, like a four ounce glass jar, you can fill it with the organic witch hazel. And then you can add 20 drops of lavender essential oil, which is very soothing, helps calm any type of irritated skin, any redness. Um, and then I add 20 drops of frankincense oil. Frankincense oil is an amazing anti-inflammatory. Um, it's also antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. So whatever is going on or brewing in there, I can be assured that I am going to be able to support my pet's immune system naturally and um, clean out those ears. So you can mix that in a bottle, or if you're on the go, um, I keep this in Bella's travel bag. <laughs> I take a mason jar and I fill it with the um, organic witch hazel. For a 16 ounce jar like this, you're going to um, quadruple that recipe. So if that's a four ounce jar. So 16 ounces, I'm going to add 80 drops of lavender, 80 drops of frankincense. And then I just shake it, shake it, shake it. Now I then go to your local drugstore or even the dollar store and get those cotton rounds and you soak those cotton rounds in your ear cleaner. So now I just squeeze out the, the liquid. Now I've got a ready to go ear cleaner. So proactively, I clean Bella in and just wipe out the inside of her ears. Very, very important to use a separate cotton round per ear. So if she has, um, she does have one ear canal, it's a little smaller than the other, and every now and then it does get a little dark discharge. So I do not want to transfer any yeast or bacteria that's in that ear into this. Just use a separate cotton pad for each ear. Just wipe her ears. She's always a little shy. It's not bothering her. She's just um, kind of a shy dog. She was abused um, before we got her. So. so that's one we proactively. Now, if I did notice that she had 
any type of dark discharge. If some dark discharge came out on that cotton round or a yellow discharge, then I would mix up an ear treatment oil. So in my ear treatment oil, I would use fractionated coconut oil. So this is a two ounce bottle, glass bottle. We always wanna use glass or stainless steel when we're using essential oils. They are so powerful, they can pull the petrochemicals out of plastic. And so we're trying to avoid adding any other toxins or especially plastics or hormone disruptors for pets. There's a lot of pets out there that have thyroid conditions and they have Cushing's and Addison's, all um, hormone-based uh, health challenges. So we're gonna use a glass bottle. We're gonna fill it with our fractionated coconut oil. Fractionated just means that it stays liquid all the time. So it's ready to use. If she did have any dark discharge, I would um, then apply um, to a two ounce bottle, I would apply 10 drops of frankincense oil for that antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, 10 drops of lavender. Then I need to supercharge it a little bit. So basil oil is um, a fabulous antifungal, antiviral. And I was just asked a question this morning, and Lois, I know you're online, um, if dogs can get vertigo and tinnitus and, um, you know, be a little off base. So I, I actually want to answer that question right here in mind. Basil oil um, with a little fractionated coconut oil rubbed right behind the ear and layered with helichrysum oil rubbed right behind the ear is an ama amazing support for that. And um, if you do that three times a day, that's going to help with that problem. So we're going to add that to our ear treatment oil. We're also going to add Arbor Vitae. Arbor Vitae um, is, it, it's so powerful. It's a, an amazing wood oil and um, it protects the tree, the Arbor Vitae tree from bugs and pests and termites and um, any wood boring. So it's an amazing um, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral for our ear treatment. What I do is I then mix all of that up in my glass bottle. You never want to use a Q-tip down inside the ear, but we don't want to drip oils inside the ear canal. A dog's ear canal is L-shaped. And so it goes like this, and the eardrum is down here. I, for small dogs, I dip my Q-tip in, and I'm just rubbing the outside of her ear canals. And I'm actually going to do her ear that has some health challenges because she's been swimming quite a bit. Um, she was swimming yesterday. So you're just gonna rub the outside area that you can see. You do not wanna drip oils down inside that ear canal. If you have a larger dog, you can use one of those cotton rounds and um, use your glass dropper and just squirt that right on your cotton round and then wipe the inside of that ear. I do that twice a day for seven days. Um, and while I do that, I still stick to my ear cleaning. And every Wednesday and Sunday, I clean her ears out with this. So I'm cleaning any of that debris that is starting to rise. So um, that's my ear cleaning recipe. It has worked amazing. I had a lab that we adopted older, and um, he was probably hit by a car. And he had uh, a very, very small ear canal on one side of his head. Um, and so he would swim in the river, go down there, chase crabs, um, and he would have constant uh, water inside that ear. This maintenance recipe, using the occasional ear treatment, solved it. Um, and that was very important to me. He was older. He came to us with some kidney challenges, and I did not want to use any pharmaceutical synthetics or toxins that would tax his kidneys anymore. So I was actually able to support his own immune system so that his own body could start to treat that. So number two we're gonna talk about today goes along with itchy ears, ear challenges, um, seasonal threats, allergies, um, any type of uh, rashes on the tummy, chewing at the dog's feet, um, 
rubbing their face, really itching their, their nose or their ears. You know, they go up along the couch. The cape this year was horrendous for all that pollen, all that yellow pollen. It was everywhere and it was really affecting the dogs. One of the reasons it affects our pets so much is um, they're out there walking on all this pollen, picking it up on their feet. It's an irritant to their feet. They're also sniffing, right? They're sniffing for that right spot to go tinkle. And so they're breathing all this pollen in. It's going into their mucous membrane. A pet's limbic system is a thousand times uh, more sensitive than ours. And you know what? We shower every day. We're washing all this pollen off. Um, so we have uh, a, a little bit more of a fighting chance to get rid of it and get a jump on our, our seasonal threats. But we have solutions. So nature's antihistamine are three little oils. Lemon, lavender, and peppermint oil. When these three are combined, they have an antihistamine effect. So you can see, um, Belly was actually a little itchy in her face this morning. I have lemon, lavender, and peppermint diffusing into the air to help with her allergies. She breathes these molecules in and they soak into the mucous membranes like we had talked about. They're a direct line to her bloodstream and really help her aromatically. Um, support her immune system so that she can naturally fend off. Um, another way that you can help with seasonal allergies or threats or any type of rash is you can use your um, fractionated coconut oil. I'm going to post um, in the group the dilution rates. For a young puppy under three months of age, I recommend one drop to a tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil. Very, very diluted. It is much better to err on the side of caution when using essential oils and start um, with a higher dilution. Bella is used to having oils and so now I can adjust her accordingly. But um, for her size, Bella weighs 16 pounds. It is one drop of essential oil to four drops fractionated coconut oil. So when you're mixing your solutions up, that's the dilution rate. But I'll put the lemon, lavender, and peppermint and fractionated coconut oil in a spray bottle. That way, if she does have a rash on her tummy, I can simply spray it on and rub it in. I've used this in between her toes. And again, lemon, lavender, and peppermint, all labeled with supplement facts, all phenomenal support systems. If she does lick her feet, she can ingest that. It is okay. I do want to um, throw out there a caution that if she were going to go outside in the sun, I would not use this topically. I would wait until she came in that evening. Lemon oil is photosensitive. Lemon oil on our skin or a pet's skin can actually cause a burn with the sun. So you wanna be super cautious. But if she comes in at the end of the night, I've rinsed her off from swimming, then I'll go ahead and um, spray her feet or her tummy if she has an area that she needs that. Taking it internally does not make you photosensitive, but topically, yes. So another um, great solution, we are so used to um, using a pharmaceutical or using you know, a quick and easy fix of pill. Um, and going to your essential oils may not be natural for you yet, but eventually it will be. You'll start to think, hey, what do I have in my kit? What can I use to support my dog system? But for right now, Tri-Ease is a seasonal support um, blend. And what they've done, made it super easy for us, is they put lemon, lavender, peppermint right here in this gel cap, this little veggie cap. So if she were um, sneezing like she was when we had all that pollen, I would put this in a little cream cheese or a blueberry, however you like to give your pet um, a, you know, a supplement. I would put that in there. I'd give her one capsule in the morning and one capsule in the evening. My lab, I would give him two in the morning, two in the evening for his size. 
So this is a super way. I do know that when I travel from Florida, heading back to the Cape, that that pollen's gonna be here. So again, I'm proactive and I start her on her tri -ease about a week before we travel so that her immune system is able to fend off um, the itching, the scratching, the allergies, because those are all symptoms of an immune response. So um, we wanna do that. I, um, one last thing with allergies, I've been bombarded all the past um, several weeks with, hey, my dog's got a hot spot, my dog's got a hot spot, my dog's got a hot spot. And a hot spot can be um, on your face, on your side, on your ears, Golden Retrievers, Burmese Mountain Dogs, Labrador Retrievers are all really, really pr prone to hot spots. This is a super easy fix. You moisten your um, black tea bag. The tannins in the black tea bag are going to help draw out and dry up that moist, crusty, gooey hot spot that your pet may have gotten from um, scratching. So you're going to moisten your tea bag. You're going to take one drop of lavender oil, put it on that tea bag, and let's steal my frankincense from over here. One drop of frankincense, put it on that tea bag. You're just going to hold that with the lavender frankincense side down on your pet. Do that three times a day, and your hot spot is going to dry right up for you. Quick and easy fix costs you pennies. That's like a 20 cent fix. Um, all right, number three is lameness and arthritis. So Bella is only eight. She's, um, she doesn't really have lameness or arthritis. But my two past dogs um, were quite old and did. So I actually have Capone was my last little guy. And um, this is his lameness blend that I have mixed up. Essential oils do not have an expiration date. So I keep it. You know what? She, she might strain herself on the beach, running around. Um, she, even though she's got this bow in her hair, she's quite a little tomboy. So she's always down there chasing those crabs. Um, what I like to do is, again, for a 20-pound dog, 15 to 20-pound dog, it's one drop of essential oil to four drops of, um, or one drop, excuse me, of yeah, essential oil to four drops of fractionated coconut oil. So I will mix up um, about three quarters of my bottle, my glass spray bottle or pump bottle with fractionated coconut oil. The four oils that I have found are the most effective for arthritis and geriatrics or maybe that lab who has strained his ACL or you might have a friend who's got a dachshund. Dachshunds are known for back challenges um, just with their construction. There's a lot of um, pressure and, and wear and tear on the center of their back. So I use lemongrass oil as my first oil. Lemongrass oil is essential for reducing inflammation in tendons and ligaments. Lots of tendons and ligaments coming right off the spine or on that lab, the ACL. I use margarine oil, which is phenomenal for reducing the inflammation in muscles. And then I use frankincense oil. Again, one of my absolute favorite oils. If you can only have one oil in your home with your pets, I highly recommend the frankincense oil because it can be used for so many different um, uh, situations that come up or proactively. This is the Swiss Army knife of essential oils. And the last essential oil that is a newer oil that really made the difference for Capone um, he had some bone spurs in his spine, is Copaiba. This is unbelievable for nerve pain. It really helps calm that nerve pain. So I mix those up in my little glass bottle, and I apply one pump to the center of her spine in between her shoulder blades. The reason we apply it on the spine, you just lift that hair up, do one drop right there, rub it in, is it goes directly into the central nervous system, which is a direct line into all of those um, ligaments and muscles and, and organs. So it's going to penetrate through her body within 20 minutes. Everything that we put on our skin topically in our pets, so it's into the skin within 20 seconds, surfaces every cell in their body in 20 minutes. So if I put that on Capone in between his shoulder blades, 
I would have also put it in, in his center of his back, right in the spine, and in between his hip bones. So maybe you have those German shepherds or those big guys that have some hip dysplasia and you're wanting to comfort them. Those three areas. My geriatrics, my lab was 17. So proactively, his um, therapy was applying that twice a day. So when I was preparing breakfast and supper, I would also use this as um, his support. He was never again on any pharmaceuticals, even at the end, he would run down there and play on the beach. Another great support for arthritis and inflammation and lameness is your omegas. Just like humans, our bodies require um, plant-based omegas, marine-based omegas, um, and so Bella gets the little capsules. It's krill oil. It gets, she gets one in the morning in her food and one in the evening in her food. A larger dog, um, a lab, would get two in the morning and two in the evening. There are a lot of omegas out there. We may, and actually I have a brand that I chose that I had hanging around. So there's lots of essential oils out there. Um, or there's lots of omegas out there that um, you can uh, put on your dog's food, but they haven't been tested for heavy metals and toxins and synthetics. Um, and, and so I really can't recommend them. So I do recommend the XEO Omega. Um, all right, our next topic, which is another huge one right now, is flea and tick control. We have um, such a problem with tick-borne on Cape Cod here. So I use a natural flea and tick spray. I mix up a glass bottle, um, distilled water, and the oils that I use, and I'm going to post this recipe for you, so I don't, I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on this. I'm only going to tell you um, the reason that I did this is my little Capone was given um, heartworm preventative um, about four years ago. And the very next day after we gave him his heartworm preventative, because heartworm is so pre prevalent in Florida, he was 100% blind. He had a pharmaceutical reaction to it. And about 10,000 dogs a year have this. Um, unfortunately, it is in that five foot pamphlet that is in his um, heartworm preventative package. Um, I should have been more cautious, I know now. So I do not use anything that there possibly could be a side effect. So flea and tick, I use peppermint essential oil, cedar wood, which is very effective for ticks, um, lavender essential oil, geranium essential oil, and arborvitae essential oil. This recipe is great for cats as well. You just want to remove the peppermint essential oil. Um, and I'm going to post the recipe so we don't spend a lot of time on that. But um, I took her hiking yesterday in the woods. I just lightly misted her. I checked her when we got home. I used that same spray on myself. Neither of us had any ticks. And we, we did a six-mile hike in the punk horn yesterday. My last one I want to talk about is number five is digestive challenges. This is a biggie here, again, because I have a little tomboy who likes to eat things on the beach, but so many of us encounter situations where our pet is vomiting or has diarrhea, gas, um, upset stomach, that, that squealing tummy, um, or maybe motion sickness in the car, maybe gets um, ill in the car. They do make car diffusers, and so you can simply use our digest scent, our digestive blend which is a combination of several different oils. You've got ginger, you've got fennel, you've got peppermint, all those oils that um, help calm and soothe our tummies. There's a couple ways to use this. Aromatically, um, in our diffuser. Uh, topically, I would add four drops of our, frank, our fractionated coconut oil to one drop of the digestin and I would just simply rub it right on her tummy if she was having any type of problem. If I've seen she's down there eating seaweed or something yucky, 
I do it preventatively because I don't want to clean up the house. Um, so topically, you can use it that way. We, um, we do have a lot of this going on just because of where we live. So I have taken an old digestin bottle and actually mixed up the proper dilution and I put a little spray bottle on. So now I can just simply spray her tummy and I, I, it's already ready for me. Either way, um, digestin costs eight cents per drop. So it cost me eight cents to treat in um, any type of tummy challenge that she may be having. Another way, um, the lab, again, they've made this super easy. They put digest in, in a sock job. She could have one capsule in the morning, one capsule in the evening, um, and a, a lab size would get two capsules in the morning, two capsules in the evening. And usually by day two, um, the end of day one, when you wake up the next day, most of your digestive challenges have been alleviated. Talking, um, I'm going to let our model go here. Talking about digest, uh, digestive challenges, allergies, rashes, chewing feet, ear challenges, um, all of those are immune responses. So it's very, very important that your pet's immune system is in tip-top shape. 70% of their immune system stems from their digestive tract. So if you could add one supplement, I'd like you to add two. I'd like you to add the X E Omega to your pet's um, diet too. But if you could add one supplement, I would highly recommend it be a probiotic because if their digestive tract is not in balance, then the rest of their immune system is thrown off. And so she gets one of these at night. The reason I do it at supper time now is um, our bodies go into rest and repair mode. So it is more beneficial to give it to her after supper, um, before we go to bed, to really help her body rest and repair. Um, so those are just a couple quick tips. I just want to show you how easy it is to support so many of the things that we encounter. Um, and once you have your main essential oils, you can have some of these already prepared. Um, I do want to follow up with a second pet webinar. My very favorite topic in the whole wide world, but it's a really long topic, is nutrition. I am huge on nutrition. If you are not putting um, proper nutrition, live enzymes into your pet's body, you're always going to have health challenges. You're always going to have um, uh, some immune response problems because there's no lag nutrition for them to repair themselves. So our next um, webinar is next Friday at noon. We're going to talk about nutrition, emotional support, thunderstorm anxiety, traveling anxiety, going to the vet, going to the groomer, um, separation anxiety, lumps and bumps. How many of us have dogs with um, uh, all sorts of, you know, uh, lipomas or warts? There may be things that you can do. Of course, you need to go to your vet first. You need to know exactly what that lump or bump is. But um, if it's um, fat or a fat deposit, um, we have some solutions. And we are going to talk about oral care. I know, especially with a lot of little dogs, oral care and dentals, a lot of dogs are going under anesthesia every year for dentals. There's things we can do proactively to help you avoid dangerous anesthesia um, and, and losing those teeth. Um, and also respiratory respiratory um, challenges, whether it be you work in a rescue facility and you're having dogs come in with things like tunnel cough and, um, you know, or, or a cat facility with or respiratory challenges. There are things you can do to support those pets. Um, so those are a, a couple of my quick tips. I'm going to open it up for you guys. Um, let me unmute you. And um, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. I'm also going to um, post all of those recipes that I mentioned in our um, page. Okay, there you go. All of you are, should be able to unmute yourself. There you go, you're all unmuted. Any, any questions? I have one. Sure. 
When you hold the tea bag on the hot spot, how long do you hold it on for? Usually about five minutes. And um, if you can, um, you know, I know a lot of times when you go to the vet, they'll they'll shave it and really clean. If you can really kind of clean that hair away, um, I have a lot of friends who have show dogs. They don't want to shave their dogs. Um, okay. so really clean that hair away and hold it for about five minutes. Um, and do that three times a day. It's amazing how those tannins and the lavender and the frankincense really dry that up. Okay, thank you. It's a great, great, um, easy tip, you know? Yeah. Anybody else? But these are all, you know, it, these are all recipes that a lot of times when I brought in my foster dogs into the, the I have a question. Sure. Um, where did you get your sprayer for your um, Digest Send bottle and all the other smaller bottles? You know what? Um, currently now, doTERRA does have, um, in your uh, LRP, they are offering sprayers and tops and drops, but I, I bought these before. They were offering those, and I bought them on Amazon. All I did, this is a, um, the Digest Send is 